Hi everybody, I am Ellie Anglin and I am an artist and writer who works in Kitchener, Ontario. And one of my primary mediums are zines, so I'm going to take you on a little tour through my zine world today and I hope you enjoy it. Um, I went to U of W for uh, English literature and I met a lot of friends who did writing and art there and I hung out um, at nighttime at the Jane Bond on Princess Street a lot and there were a lot of people there who were involved in making art and writing and producing zines and one of these people who was really active was Mark LeConte. He's currently the owner of the Princess th uh, Cafe downtown or uptown Waterloo and he made a zine, a very prolific zine, um, called Caterpillar, spelled C-T-R-L-L-P-R. -L -L I think I'm spelling that right. And it was an amazing um, zine with full of collage and writing and reviews and recipes and um, poetry. And it was really, that really inspired me. And I, uh, with a group of four other women friends we uh, who were all interested in writing and zines. We started th this zine, which was called Scared of My Mate. Um, and um, it was a zine that was, uh, it was a, meant to be a little bit more literary in, in um, tone than Caterpillar. So it had a lot of um, poetry and the poetry is illustrated with collage. And this was not just our, our work, but we would source it from throughout the community. Anyone was will, was able to submit. And it was so fun and creative to do these layouts. Um, and uh, some amazing artwork by local artists. And this was the first issue. We put them for free at uh, places like Jane Bond, Ethel's, Delirium, Orange Monkey, and Orange, um, and Encore Records in downtown Kitchener. And oh, here's issue two. This is the editorial team here. That's me. Um, we used a lot of found objects. So just basically things that we would find on the ground as we walked around and we'd put them in. Um, we have artwork, uh, sort of fictional like letters between people, a huge big poster. Um, volume three, um, I think we got a little bit more skilled at the layouts and I really still, this was probably 12 years ago now, but I still just love a lot of the content. It's so special and we had, uh, we included, um, some letters and writing and illustration by children we knew. Um, so I, and I'm still friends and collaborators with a lot of these people. So that was the last issue and Scared of My Mate was a collective effort um, of a bunch of people, but um, the five editors were myself, Caroline Wesley, Megan Snyder, Amy Egerdine, and Eftahia Lucas. This was one of my zines that I that I did um, following Scared of My Maid, and it was called Sundries, and it was a fun zine by Ellie. So I was just having fun with the medium that is um, a collage that I glued onto a square envelope, and inside the envelope was just a selection of um, prints of collages and, and illustrations and writing and I actually put like some stickers sticker sheets and stuff for people inside the envelope for people but I guess those didn't survive this was a collection of um, fortune cookies um, a poem about a drug overdose but a joke found art actually it was like a prayer that that i had find, found in a cemetery that someone had dropped lists collages about britney spears a drawing and a poem 
collage about Jane Austen, three, poetry about a cat. One of my next scenes was called the Sigerson dossier. And this was like kind of an illustrated murder mystery that was based on a character from a book I really loved. It's a telegram and there's a different clue on every page. And drawings of the clues. And this was uh, printed for me at, at Pandora Press, um, a really awesome independent printer in uh, Kitchener. And they did like a special fancy binding that made it look really quite professional. So shortly after that, I moved to Toronto for a period of about uh, four years. And um, it was a really fun, exciting time, but I was extremely poor. And I got a job working in an office and um, I had no other way to make zines and afford to make zines other than stealing photocopies from the office. And my bosses were pretty much aware I was doing it and I think sort of looked the other way. But this was uh, the result of it. I became quite obsessed, even more so with cats. And I did a series of little zines called Kitty Doodles. And um, each zine is just, just contains uh, drawings and collage with funny little cute captions about cats. Um, and it ties in like feminism and jokes and like mental health stuff and being gay. Uh, and um, I, sold, I sold these, they were pretty popular. So that, that was a really easy thing for me to make a little bit of money with. Um, but they're so cute that I think a lot of people thought they were for kids. So, but they're really not because there's quite a lot of adult content really in, in them. As you can probably see there, please send nudes. I think the next scene that I did was probably my most ambitious scene that I have done so far. And um, although I was very poor in Toronto, I had the um, advantage of being in a larger city that has more funding for artists. So um, I applied to and was successful in getting a Toronto Arts Council grant. Um, so they which was for this uh, zine called Tender Buttons. And it is a um, hand bound full color collage zine. Each copy has a different uh, found paper sleeve that comes apart. And then you can open it. And uh, this was based on a short story that I had written in university when I was in the creative writing program. And I broke the story up into very small parts and then illustrated each part uh, with collage. And I use, I use a lot of vintage materials from thrift, thrift stores in my work. And that's sort of, the story is actually about kind of partly collecting vintage buttons at thrift stores. So it kind of all ties together. And that's, I still use that in my art quite a bit. Um, but this was quite a lot of work and it was really, really fun to do. And then I had like a zine launch in Toronto and in Waterloo. Um, I think I printed 250 copies to begin with, but since then I've probably printed about 600. Um, and sold them at zine fairs and stores and cafes and craft sales. And I've got a lot of really great feedback on it. I Googled how to get an ISBN number at the time and I don't know if this is actually accurate, but I put an ISBN number on it and who knows, maybe it's real, maybe it's not, but it's real to me and that's all that matters. Uh oh, my cat wants to come in. Okay, baby. 
So after I lived in Toronto for four years, I had to return to Kitchener Waterloo for a variety of reasons, but um, my, I had family with health problems, but also I was really poor um, and Toronto's really expensive. So I moved back to Waterloo and I felt a little bit conflicted about it because I wasn't sure if an artist could still be active and I guess successful in whatever form that might take in a, in a mid-sized city compared to a bigger city like Toronto. And I kind of um, channeled that kind of um, existential angst into a project called The Water Loser, which was a first a Tumblr blog and then became um, an Instagram. It's now defunct, but it's in that I don't still add content to it, but um, you can check out check it out still on uh, Instagram at the Water Loser, um, and I also created this zine that was funded through an Indiegogo account or campaign, and it's called the Golden Bat, and um, the Golden Bat is supposed to represent the Tri Cities area, and um, it, the byline is a love letter to the Tri Cities in twenty eight parts, and this drawing on the cover is. Um, the old kind of trashy strip mall that existed in Uptown Waterloo now uh, that has the skating rink and beer town. Um, oh, hi, baby. So inside there's quite, uh, there's uh, actually, it's all art and writing um, by artists who live in Kitchener Waterloo and it's all about Kitchener Waterloo. Okay, sorry, my little baby bat here is insisting on joining us, so I'll just continue over top of her. Um, so it contains a lot of writing, um, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Yeah, you might recognize th those buildings, which are in downtown. Kitchener and have these two mounds on the top and then the artists turn them into breaths. So moved back to Waterloo. I got a job working at Jane Bond, the greatest bar and restaurant in town. And uh, while I was working there, myself and the other staff would entertain ourselves during slow times by trying to think up celebrity food puns. And we came up with a list of probably 500 and we would just laugh so hard about them. So eventually we started hanging out and making collages based on the celebrity food puns. And then I ended up putting together this uh, zine called Eat Me Famous which uh, contains like a list of all, a lot of, most of the puns, pictures of celebrities eating, uh, and then um, collages based on the puns. So we have Bjork Chop, Anthony I. Hopkins, Bread Pit, and um, poetry about bread. Uh, more collages. Naomi Campbell Soup, Scarlett Johansson, Curry Fisher, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> a, a deli meat. That was a really fun one. And there's Arnie eating an ice cream cone. Uh, this was, these things were not really exclusively made by me by any means. Actually, they're mostly made, created by, um, an amazing writer and artist and person named Russ Martin, who lives in Toronto. And this, um, group of drag fans and friends that he's, uh, sort of created a little group with. And that group is called, uh, Feel Your Fantasy. And he runs a fantasy league for RuPaul's Drag Race and I've become over the years increasingly obsessed with drag and drag race um 
and uh, there was an initial issue that I wasn't so involved in and I don't have a copy of anymore, um, but I helped with some of the artwork and writing on the local drag um, issue, which featured uh, local drag queens, especially in Toronto and London, Hamilton. Um, and I think one of the great things about this group and Russ is that um, there's not just a focus on the amazing queens that come out of RuPaul's Drag Race, but um, they kind of expand it to focus on drag queens and drag kings and non-binary performers that um, may not have the same privilege and exposure that uh, people on Drag Race have. Uh, this one was like a spooky edition where we covered this great uh, re reality competition TV show called Dragula, which is more on the spookier side of drag. This sort of like horror um, queens and kings, and they're just amazing. And I recommend that you check it out. And it was really fun working on these scenes. Uh, in 2017, I was lucky enough to start working at the Kitchener Public Library, where, where I still work, and you may find me today. Um, and in 20, I think 2018, um, I put on an event with my friend and colleague, uh, Matt, Matt McKinnon and, uh, another friend, Curtis Williams. And we, uh, presented the movie Cry Baby by John Waters, but we also had, um, drag performers, uh, lip syncing to musical numbers and uh, in intermissions and uh, that was Kine who you may have seen recently on Canada's Drag Race and also a really amazing local drag king named George Swooney and it was such a fun night and um, the audience was really encouraged to to dress up and they did and to dance and sing along. And so I created this zine, which is called the Crybaby Songbook. And it's about the movie Crybaby, which is a really amazing movie if you haven't seen it. The cast of characters, about the director and some of the actors. Um, and also with the song lyrics so that people could sing along. That was really fun to do and the really really fun event so I'm lucky to work where I do very lucky and um I think like the last two years of my life have been really kind of characterized by loss unfortunately I lost a dear uncle and my mom and my dad and um my dad passed away in 2018 and just over a year later my mom died and um although these were extremely sad and heartbreaking losses i in both respects used art and zine making to heal and process my grief and um especially with my instead of having a funeral for her we um did a memorial exhibit at the button factory of her quilts because she was a really active and incredible quilter and um someone who really inspired us my sister and i and probably everyone who met her to be artists and um in addition to the memorial exhibit i also um created this scene which features a collage of, of her quilts on the cover and some information about her. And then um, kind of some a story about her. And then it has pictures, um, photographs, and the stories behind all of her different work. So it starts out with her embroidery and then um, with her quilts 
that she did when we were young and the stories behind them. And it just shows how she used quilts to tell stories and express herself in amazing ways. And yeah, she was just really prolific. And uh, it was it was kind of painful to write this and put it together, but I'm so glad I did. And it really helped me to process everything and to heal. So that was a little bit of a heavy period, but I feel that um, I'm definitely starting to kind of recover. And um, one of the reasons why I think is because I've used art and writing and zine making to process everything. And <laughs> this is a huge mess. Oh my gosh. But um, this is what, what I'm working on now, and it is a graphic memoir looking at the role of material, um, meaning like fabric, but also paper, and the concept of materialism that has the, and the role that those things have played in my life. Um, it's, um, I think, overall a happy story. <laughs> um, and you can kind of see the process that I do. Like these are pages, they really shouldn't be glued together like this because it makes it a lot harder, but it also makes me be able to envision them in book form a little bit better. So here are a lot of the pages. And um, I finally kind of learned how to use computers better for editing of um, images. And so I now, make these initial collages and then scan them into my computer and then um, do like a final edit on there and then do the collating and um, organizing of the pages online and it makes it so much easier. But I won't show you everything here, but um, it just gives you a little bit of a better idea of how a zine looks before it's printed. <laughs> It's a mess and it's really fun. So thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in learning more about my work, you can follow me on Instagram at Ellie Anglin or visit my website, www.ellieanglin.com. Um, one of the other projects that I've been involved with over the years is the collection and maintenance of the KW Zine Library. And while the KW Zine Library doesn't have a physical space right now, it is being um, digitized by an amazing organization called KW Article Club. So you can visit their website, which is www.kwarticleclub.wixsite.com. Dot com and um, there you can view the entire catalog of the KW Zine Library and eventually you'll be able to read the zines online. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed. Bye bye.